And action this weekend in China now allows for presidents to serve more than two terms, allowing, at least theoretically, President Xi Jinping to serve for life. But China is, no, is known for longer-term outlooks on their plans and everything else. And this is certainly the case with their enormous economic development project known as the Belt and Road Initiative. RT correspondent Caleb Malpit, one of our Chinese experts, joins us. Caleb, thanks for helping us out today. For the last several weeks, we have known that the idea to eliminate the two terms for presidents would be uh, struck from the Chinese constitution. But what does that mean in practice for President Xi Jinping and the country? Well, they're getting rid of term limits. Now, we know that back in the days of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, he, they didn't have term limits, and he kept running until he died. And the thing is, you know, the Chinese Communist Party has taken China from being one of the poorest countries in the world to, at this point, being the second largest economy on Earth. And part of the reason they've had such success is that they are constantly adjusting their system and trying to shift the political system, the economic system, and make it work more efficiently and make it work better. And at this point, it's pretty clear that uh, President Xi, he's waging kind of a crackdown on corruption and trying to make a cleaner environment for business, trying to make the economy work better, try to get rid of bribery and graft and things like that. And that the party really likes what he's doing. They've added his teachings and his ideological breakthroughs into the party constitution. And at this point, they want him to stay at the top job. Yeah, uh, you know, when you talk about their economy and you say they're, they're number two, but as you know, I mean, they were number one for a number of years. India just per surpassed them, but they still have, uh, at least it's reported, they still have a 6.8% uh, gross domestic product. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, and their economy just in general seems to be doing gangbusters. But let's talk about their long-term policies and, and, and tell people, because in, in the U.S., for example, I mean, we're looking at, you know, what's the plan for the next uh, two years or the next uh, president for four years. And they got longer-term plans. And then after that, I want to tell, uh, tell our audience about what the Belt and Road Initiative is, Caleb. Well, you have to realize that China's economy is quite different than the economy of the United States. Now, in China, they have a stock market. It's very important in terms of bringing in foreign investment. But at the end of the day, less than 10% of the Chinese population is in any way tied in with the stock market. The Chinese economy isn't all financialized. The Chinese economy is about steel. It's about aluminum. It's about copper and electric cars and research and development and computer technology. And it's this, this is essentially what has enabled them to come out of poverty. They've laid the foundations, the infrastructure uh, that a lot of developing countries do not have. And if you look at the Belt and Road Initiative, they're essentially doing the same thing around the world. You know, they build an airport in Bangladesh. Uh, they build railway in Pakistan. Uh, they go to Brazil and they build hydroelectrical power plants. And when you lay the, the basis of infrastructure, the domestic economies of developing countries can then start to flourish. And then there's more of an economy for China to do business. So the two countries become richer. Uh, the term that they use is win-win cooperation. And that's essentially what the Belt and Road Initiative is about. And it, it seems like common sense that if countries around the world are doing business with each other and trading with each other and making lots of money in the process that, that they're not going to go to war with each other. That seems like common sense, but that's often pretty absent in U.S. discourse. We forget that, that when countries are economically tied, there's a better chance for peace. And at this point, uh, that's the vision. You can't just, they, they, they argue that you can't just cut yourself off from the rest of the world. You can't build a wall and isolate yourself. And in this 21st century globalized economy, countries need to be focusing on their common aims and common and goals. You know, at this point, China wants to get rid of a, a lot of the problems in the world. Terrorism is a threat to them. Drug trafficking is a threat to them. And they've made a strategic decision to fight against these things, not with drones, but with jobs. And if you can eliminate poverty and you can provide economic opportunity and build up the level of material abundance, uh, you can actually work toward eradicating a lot of the poverty and a lot of the problems facing uh, the global economy during the period that we're living in. And Caleb, just real quick, it, just, it also seems like uh, China is, is filling a void uh, by the Trump administration, at least in the short term, uh, who seems to be more isolationist. Do you agree? 
Well, they certainly have voiced opposition to Trump's policies, and they have said that protectionism and isolation is just not realistic in the, in the world economy. They favor win-win cooperation between countries, investment in infrastructure and new technology, cooperation. They seem to have a quite different approach than U.S. President Donald Trump to international economic affairs. They sure do. RT correspondent and China expert Caleb Maupin, thank you so much for your time and for your expertise.